night of December 15th, 1852, in Paris, France, Henry Becquerel was born. His grandfather, Antoine Caesar, was the inventor of the electrolytic method for extracting metals from their ores. He was also the engineer in chief at Ponce et Chaussée. His father, Alexander Edmund Becquerel, was a professor of applied physics and had done research on solar radiation and phosphorescence. As a young child, Henry did not want to follow in his family's footsteps. Daddy, I don't want to be an award winning physicist. I want to be a fireman. But he never became a fireman. His father had other plans. Your grandfather is a physicist, and I, your father, am a physicist. You will be one too. Becquerel received engineering training at École de Ponce et Chaussées, a engineering school for bridges and highways. For many years, Becquerel was an engineer for the Department of Bridges and Highways, having been appointed chief engineer in 1894. He received his formal scientific education at the École Polytechnique, where he eventually took the chair of physics, and at the same time was named assistant naturalist to his father at the museum. He took the professorship upon his father's death. Electricity, magnetism, energy, optical phenomena, all half-solved mysteries of the 19th century. Henry Becquerel was to make a significant breakthrough towards the understanding of the universe around us. One day while working on his juxtaposition Otron, Henry Becquerel simulated some scientific experiments that would one day change the world. He learned that the x-rays issued from the area of a glass vacuum tube were made fluorescent when struck by a beam of cathode rays. He wanted to find out if there was a connection between the invisible radiation and the visible light. In order to test this hypothesis, Becquerel placed phosphorescent crystals upon a photographic plate. He then covered it with a piece of opaque paper and left it in the sunlight for several hours. When he removed the paper, there were silhouettes of the crystals on the plate. He simulated the experiment again, only this time without sunlight and using uranium salts instead of the crystals. He found that the results were the same. There was a silhouette implanted on the photographic plate. Becquerel had published seven papers and was the proud inventor of Becquerel rays. Fortunately, Becquerel rays did not receive the recognition they deserved until some radioactive elements were discovered by Marie and Pierre Curie. Marie discovered thorium, and together we discovered polonium and radium. Now that we discovered these things, Becquerel can get the recognition that he deserves! And so he did. He also went on to discover that beta particles are the same as electrons. He also discovered that radioactive materials have cycles of decay and regeneration, known as the transformation theory of radioactivity. And he also discovered the physiological effects of radiation on the body. In 1903, Becquerel won the Nobel Prize for Physics and shared it with Marie and Pierre Curie. 